two, one. Hi everybody, Mr. Higgins here. And instead of doing my normal student project tutorial, I am gonna talk a little bit about screencasting, almost more for teachers than for students, although students can use the same technique to make a screencast to teach their friends or their teachers about something that they really like on the internet. With all the remote teaching going on, a lot of people have been asking me questions about teaching with video. My background, my degree is actually in video, but I became a CTE teacher and I've been teaching computer science and media arts for 10 years. And and I have been teaching a flipped class for almost four years now. So I just wanted to talk about screencasting, free screencasting, and fancy screencasting. Most people I think would be really interested in free screencasting because they don't necessarily want to invest a ton into the process, but I'm going to talk about the free tools, the fancy tools, and then I'm going to demonstrate. And how to do that, I brought my Chromebook here. The camera I'm recording on right now is a fancy Panasonic camera, and I've got my editing rig, I've got my green screen, I've got my lights, um, i got my good mic, but you don't need any of that. All you need is a Chromebook to do free screen casting. So we're going to get into it. Before I start with the project and showing you how to use Nimbus, I want to talk about some of the fancy options, because some people might be interested in the fancy option. The most well-known one is probably Camtasia, and that's a single purchase of $250. Because I was doing videos so fast and speed was my primary concern, I actually bought Camtasia two years ago, and I like it. It is really good at doing screencasts and doing them fast, although it does have a few limitations. Generally speaking, it's a really good cheaper than Premiere fast option for kind of professional screencasting. You also have a lot of your mouse interactions, highlights, zooms. Two of the other ones, I'm an educator, I teach in middle school. Screencast-O-Matic and Screencastify are two of the ones that I hear often. What I'm gonna talk about and what I suggest that everyone use for free screencasting is Nimbus. Screencast-O-Matic and Screencastify do have free options, but the reality is that they paywall essential features. High resolution, recording a video over five minutes. Those are necessary if you're gonna make a lot of videos for your students. So their free versions just don't cut it. Nimbus, on the other hand, does have a paywall, but it doesn't cut any of the important features. It's luxury features, it's not core needs. While Screencast-O-Matic and Screencastify paywall core needs for doing high quality screencasting. So the, if you wanna invest in those, they're good options, but as a teacher, I have no budget. I believe that a lot of teachers are probably in that same situation. So I wanna talk about not the fancy screencasting options, but the free screencasting options. Of those, there's two major ones. So Nimbus, like I said, it does have a paid version, but that's totally unnecessary. It's just luxury high-end features that you'd be getting if you do the paid version. And then there's OBS, Open Broadcast Software. OBS is super powerful and you can do a lot of really great things with it, but it is kind of complicated to use. OBS also works for streaming. So if you're interested in trying to stream some classes on uh, Twitch or YouTube, if your school district lets that, is okay with that, OBS is a pretty good option for higher quality, but Nimbus is super easy. And for a lot of teachers that I talk to, they're kind of intimidated by this process of trying to record themselves and put that video on YouTube and send that out to their students in classroom or whatever other LMS they use. What I did put down here too is two different video editing options that are free both DaVinci Resolve and HitFilm Express they are both very capable video editing systems not as good as Premiere but not $240 a year which is uh, super important to lots of people but if you do your screencast with OBS and you edit with DaVinci Resolve or HitFilm Express you can still do really high quality fancy looking screencast it just takes a lot more kind of effort to get there if you got a lot of time OBS to Premiere so uh, you'll definitely have the best looking thing, but it takes a lot more time and it costs a lot of money. You just do Nimbus, it's free, it's easy, it's quick. And I think that's generally all my thoughts on video editing and screencasting when it comes to free options and fancy options. Okay, so jumping into actually making a quick free screencast on our Chromebook. I just wanna talk a little more about what we'll be using, which is the app called Nimbus. One thing I do wanna mention though, is the naming conventions seem a little confused to me. On YouTube and Twitter, I've seen it referenced as Nimbus Capture, although in Chrome itself is Nimbus Screenshot and Screen Video Recorder. If you go to the Chrome store, this is what it's gonna be called. We can call it Nimbus Screenshot, Nimbus Capture, same difference. So when you load up Nimbus, it's going to take you to a couple tutorial videos and you can just close that out. Nimbus will be on the top right here. 
Okay, I do wanna go over just a few of the settings here before I record. So what we wanna concentrate on when you're screencasting is your record video tab. Pretty much nothing else matters here. When you click in, you'll see the record mic sound. Make sure your tab sound is on if you're recording something involving audio and that you want the audience of your video to hear. So you can turn that on. If you wanna record that screencast and have yourself in the corner, kind of like I'm doing right now, I think you could probably skip drawing tools and watermarks. You could experiment with those if you want. So we have three options for what we're recording, tab, desktop and webcam. If you want to record your webcam and kind of have you in the corner, you're going to have to use tab. That doesn't work with the desktop option. You can record webcam only. Theoretically, you could record webcam only and then you could record your desktop separately and you could then edit those in DaVinci Resolve or one of those other free editing programs. Just wanna go into video settings too for a second. With the bitrate, you can set that up to 128. For your video, if you've got a low powered Chromebook, it might make sense for you to keep that bitrate down. Basically, the smaller the bitrate, the less intensive it is on your system. For your frame frequency, you could keep it on 24 or 30. Just probably not a good reason to go to 60. And then you could set your countdown to three seconds or something like that. You can also change your webcam and microphone options here if you have multiples. If you're on a Chromebook, you'll probably just be set to default. It should be easy. I'm gonna jump over to my Chromebook right now and start recording. Making the jump in three, two, one. Hi everybody, Mr. Higgins here now recording via Nimbus screencast on my Chromebook. And it took me all about 15 seconds to get this up and running. Now, obviously this looks a little bit different than my fancy setup. I don't have software that's automatically keying out the background, but you do have a couple options to control things. For example, I can move the webcam around so I could put it up here if I wanted to cover up some ads or something like that. I could also go full screen if I wanted to just have the students focused on me. If I'm say doing a lecture and reading and I didn't want them to see the background and I wanted to jump back and forth, you do have that option. This is recording in tab with webcam turned on. The downside to recording with web with webcam turned on is you can only screencast on that tab. If you click over to another tab, it doesn't show up. If it's super important for you when doing your screencast to jump between tabs, you probably want to record in desktop mode. The only problem with that is it will still get your voice, but it's not going to record your webcam. And I do really think it's a super neat thing, especially in these COVID times, for teachers to kind of add their face to their digital lessons, especially when we're all kind of learning this remote teaching. For the first two years when I was screencasting, I just did my voice when screencasting. Then I added myself in the corner, and especially for my sixth graders and seventh graders, it just seemed like there was a lot more connection. The value of that can't be understated, especially with remote teaching and not really seeing folks. So I would encourage you, if you're a teacher considering screencasting, try to add yourself to the corner if you can. It's a sweet way just to be able to reconnect as much as possible with your students in these very strange and tenuous times. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn turn off my Nimbus screencast. You come up to the top here, click stop recording. And then the preview window for Nimbus should pop up automatically in your browser. Just click save video. It should save your video as a WebM file. So you can name it. Once you have it saved as a WebM, then what we want to do is prep it for distribution to your students. Okay, so we want to click over to our YouTube channel so we can add that WebM. Let's just click upload video. And then literally we are just gonna drag and drop our recording into YouTube. And it's going to automatically process that. Once it finishes processing, we'll actually be able to use the onboard editing tools on YouTube to chop out any mistakes that you made. We'll be going over that quickly and then I'll be wrapping things up. Okay, so if you go to your channel, once your video is finished processing, what you wanna do is click YouTube Studio because that's what's gonna give us access to the editor, which will let you edit out any mistakes that you've made. So to do that, we're gonna click it down on our videos in the editor, and then we're going to click our video here. The most important thing that we're gonna do is once you have your video here, so let's just click into the editor real quick. So when we get into our editor, what we first wanna do is we wanna find an area that we wanna take out, press space bar uh -huh. play. If you so I just wanna edit this out, make it a little more trim. So I'm gonna click my trim button and I'm gonna click split. Oh, I'm gonna zoom in to make sure it's zoom in three. That'll be pretty good. I'm gonna move my, my scrub back. I'm gonna click split again. And then what I can do is I'll actually take this area and I'll pull it back to the other area. So when I press play, you just don't see yourself. If you want to. 
and it will just skip that area that I've used trim and split to edit out. As you go through your video, you can edit out, you can split out any of the, if you make a mistake and you mess up, just take that out. And you can also add music. YouTube actually, when you do the plus audio here, it gives you a lot of options for copyright free music that you can use. You can also add blurs. So it's really nice, especially for teachers that might have sensitive or private information. In the videos or recording, you can add screen specific blurs in post here. So if you're not using a high end editor and you just want to use that YouTube editor, it actually can help you kind of blur out like say a student email or something that's on there. So I think that's pretty much it. You save. I would just go to my video. I would grab my link, copy. And then when I'm in my Google Classroom and I go to create an assignment, I would just add from YouTube and I copy and paste that link, click it, and I can share it with my students. And I mean, that's more or less screencasting. It's not really that difficult. The more you do it, the better you'll get. I've been doing this for four or five years almost. So if you have any questions, let me know uh, in the comments or email me. I'm happy to help any teachers that want to help their students. Been doing this video stuff a lot. And if you want to get into the fancy screencasting, let me know too. I'm happy to give any thoughts or opinions. I've tried a lot of different equipment and I can probably help troubleshoot things. Hope all you teachers and students are doing great and catch you next time. All right, peace.